Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So today is actually going to be a pretty short video. I'm sure it's going to surprise everybody who looks at the timestamp, and they're going to be like, Mr. C, what happened? Where's the rest of the video? Uh, we're doing acceleration graphs. And the thing about acceleration graphs is that they're really simple. They fit on one piece of paper. The reason for that should be evident if you remember back to the summary notes that we did, right, where we said that there were nine possible arrangements of shapes and three of them we don't do. We don't do a sloped uh, uh, sloped acceleration graph, we don't do a curved acceleration graph, and we don't do a curved velocity graph. Well, two of the things we don't do are on acceleration graphs, which means that acceleration graphs have literally one possible shape in the grade 11 course. One shape doesn't take too long to analyze. I mean, either it exists or it doesn't, and you just learn what it means, and there it is in front of you. So, as it says here, an acceleration graph shows the acceleration of an object. That's it. Now, remember, when we talked about acceleration, we talked about the fact that acceleration is hard to see. Acceleration is the most abstract of all the ideas. It's the one that is the most nebulous, the most difficult to picture. So that makes an acceleration graph one of the more difficult ones to understand. Sometimes you'll get it, and sometimes you'll be like, what does this mean? There have been more than a few times where I've been looking at acceleration graph going, what? No, that's, oh, I'm, ugh, I'm doing it like it's a velocity graph. So don't worry if you get it mess too messed up here. Anyway, this graph has only one shape because we only study constant acceleration. So if we draw a real, real quick acceleration time graph here, put it over here, just like we have all the other ones. There we go. And, oh, 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 stay still. There we go. And to continue the pattern, I will do the acceleration time graph in red. So an acceleration time graph does not have curves, and it does not have slopes. So everything has to be flat lines. So you'll get a graph that looks something like this. And that's it. The graph has to look like that. We cannot have a graph that goes up or down because those are sloped lines and sloped lines don't exist in our versions of the graphs. Now obviously sloped lines do exist in real life and if you continue to do physics in later uh, years, if you go on into university and stuff, you will deal with acceleration graphs that have more to them. But here you don't. Here it is just flat lines. Now this graph can be a little hard to parse, to read, to interpret properly. So one of the things that we tend to do is that we will tend to put dotted lines connecting the different parts of the graph like so. Oh, I didn't draw my graph far enough here. Okay, well, it's fine. We'll just adjust it real quick here. So you tend to draw dotted lines like so to connect the parts of the graph. The purpose of these dotted lines here is to break up the segments and to make it so you can tell clearly what each section is. Now, because these lines are all flat, there is a very limited information that we can collect. It's still useful information, but it's limited. What do I mean by that? Well, first things first, what does the y mean? Remember, negative, we got positive y, we've got zero and we've got negative y. Positive y is going to mean acceleration is forward. Zero is going to mean that acceleration is zero and negative y is gonna be that acceleration is backwards. Obviously I just use arrows there, I could write it out. Don't be that lazy, Mr. C. Now remember, acceleration forward doesn't necessarily mean I'm going forward, right? Acceleration tells me the change in velocity. It doesn't tell me what the velocity is. So just because I have an acceleration that happens to be pointing that way doesn't mean that I'm, you know, magically going that way. I could be going this way. 
If I'm going backwards, the acceleration pointing forward just simply tells me that I'm slowing down. Got to remember back to this little um, chart that we did when we were talking about acceleration. And we talked about the fact that if the velocity and the acceleration are both positive, you get faster. If the velocity and the acceleration are both negative, you get faster because they're working together. If they work together, faster. If they work in opposition, I don't know what I'm trying to write there. Let's try that again. If they're working in opposition, if they're working in opposition, then they will both be slower. So by itself, the acceleration direction doesn't actually tell you what's going on. There has to be another way. So slope calculations, they're pretty much meaningless, right? Like there's no slope for any of these. So if I have a flat line, the acceleration is just a single number, forward or backwards. But there's no calculations for me to do, at least not in slope. I think you can tell by looking at the graph that we do have shapes, right? So we could find the area. Now you also see why it is that we put those dotted lines. The reason we use dotted lines is to say that it's not like, you know, it's connected in any way, right? It just jumps from here to down there. But by dotting the lines, then we can at least use it to like map things properly so we don't get lost, right? Because that's always going to be a problem. Okay. So area calculations is, we know how to do them. We just did them with the velocity graphs. But here's the thing. It's actually easier in an acceleration graph than it is in a velocity graph because an acceleration graph has no triangles. There's only squares. So everything that we talked about when it comes to the acceleration, finding the area under the curve is still true. It's just really simple. Case in point, right? If I just throw some numbers up here for this one, let's say this is five and make this uh, 10. And I'll make this over here 10, and I'm going to make this one 2. Okay? So, yeah, this is 10, and this over here we'll say is 2. Obviously, I'm making numbers up, so for all I know, this is going to be really painful. Luckily, I have my trusty calculator right here. And by trusty calculator, I mean the stupid thing's not turning on. Well, that's helpful. What about trusty calculator number 2? Trusty calculator number 2 works. Okay. So we can do these, right? The acceleration of the first area, this will be the first area, second area, third area. So we can calculate these areas. And the area is going to be equal to delta v. Because of course, remember, this is the definition of acceleration. And the way we get an area calculation is we multiply both sides by delta t. These cancel. Base times height equals delta v. So it's just like with a velocity time graph. OK, that's good. It's always nice when it's a similar thing to what we've already done. Or as I unfortunately don't get to tell you guys multiple times every single day this semester, turn a new problem into an old problem you already know how to do. This acceleration graph, that's new. Huh. Area under the curve, that's old. I know how to do that. So I'll just do exactly what I did last time. So. We go delta v is equal to base times height. Well, the base here is 5, and the height is clearly 10. So 5 times 10, this is going to be 50 meters per second. And it's positive because it's in the upper part of the graph. Down here, oh, I needed to assign a value for that number down there. Um, we'll make it, uh, sure, negative 10. Why not? Down here in section 2, so there's 1, we'll say delta v1, delta v2, that's almost a triangle, is from 5 to 10, so it's going to be 5 seconds times negative 10. Well, that's easy. So that's going to be negative 50. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, in theory, what that's telling me is I've now stopped. What? Negative 50 means stopped? What happened? We'll get to it in a second, but 
See if you can figure it out. Anyway, we'll do the last one here, V3, because apparently I just need to make my life difficult. <laughs> and this is two times, oh, I forgot to put a time for the last piece here. We put out of time, we can't do this. We'll say this is 15, sure. So it's going to be another five seconds times, in this case, two. Obviously, these numbers are made up. They don't exactly match the picture I've drawn. Realistically, this is what happens when you make stuff up. Sometimes it doesn't quite line up properly. But that's okay. Five times two, we can do that. That's just going to be negative 10 meters per second. Why is it negative? It's not negative. It's positive. We know it's positive because it's above the axis. It's up here, so it must be positive. Okay. So there we go, we have all our numbers. So now, here it is the question. How fast am I going at the end of all of this accelerating? AKA, what's my speed, my velocity at 15 seconds? Well, someone who's not paying attention would say that it's plus 10 because that was the last number they calculated down here. But it's not plus 10. Why isn't it plus 10? Because this is delta v. This is change in velocity, and I'm asking for final velocity. So the final velocity, you'll remember, it goes delta v equals vf minus vi, right? Well, put some arrows on there. This is what I'm asking you for. I'm asking you, what is my velocity at the end, this part? So how can I get from here to there? Well, just like with velocity time graphs, I can rearrange this and say that velocity final is equal to delta v plus vi. What does that mean? Well, let's pretend that we started this whole thing at an initial velocity of 0. Right? We'll make it easy. I mean, I could have chosen any number. I could have chosen 20, but I'm going to choose 0 to start with. So I start off with a velocity initial of 0. What happens in the first section? I calculated a delta v of 50. So I look here at my calculation. What is the final velocity at the end of the first segment? Well, it's going to be delta v, which is plus 50, plus 0. So at the end of the first segment, I have moved 50. I'm moving at 50 meters per second, right? Because 0 plus 50 is 50. Well, at the end of the second segment, What's my final velocity? Well, my delta v here is negative 50, but my initial velocity is no longer 0. It's now positive 50, right? Because I was going at 0. Then during all of this, I sped up. And now during this part, I'm slowing down. So if I'm slowing down, well, I'm going to slow down to what number? 50 minus 50 plus 50. So that becomes 0. So I actually stop right here. The reason I stop there has nothing to do with the fact that the graph lines up there. It has everything to do with the fact that the change of going bigger and then smaller happens to cancel at that spot. Remember, in order for something to come to a stop, all the velocity has to be taken away from it. So in the first part of this graph, we add velocity to the system, to the car or whatever. And in the second part here, we're removing the velocity from the system. We're taking it away. Finally, we've got the third section. In the third section, we are at 0 again, but now the change is plus 10. So at the end of the third section, we are going plus 10. And that's it. That's pretty much everything we need to know about acceleration time graphs. Now, acceleration time graphs are kind of easy because they're just velocity time graphs without all the extra stuff in them. As a result of that, I don't actually have any acceleration practice for you guys to do in the book. I apologize. The acceleration practice I do have comes in with the next thing we're going to do, which is not as easy as acceleration time graphs. So I'm going to stop it there. You do not officially have any practice to go with this type of graph, nor will I give you a check your understanding with this kind of graph. The basic idea is just that you understand that an acceleration time graph works the same as a velocity time graph in terms of calculating area. We don't use these kind of graphs very much because they're not very useful. Knowing that the acceleration was a certain value for a stretch of time like we do here, that doesn't really help me do anything. Like It doesn't tell me how far I've gone, and it only barely tells me how fast I'm going after I do a bunch of math like here and then get this calculation. Oh, 
right over here, right? So these aren't always useful, but they can be. Uh, your cell phone has an accelerometer in it. That's how it knows to rotate the screen when you turn the phone to, to horizontal or vertical. That uses this kind of stuff in order to work. But for the rest of us, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to leave it there. Short video just to remind you guys how this stuff works. You can see it all by looking at the notes as well. Next time, though, next time we're going to be doing something a little bit different, something that you probably didn't see in grade 10. So next time is going to be graph conversions. And those usually take a bit. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. See you guys next time.